no question that New York City has the best food. About 85 to 90 different frozen items and your local fish. Forget about the Empire State Building. The Fulton Fish Market is literally New York City to the core. Think about New York as this melting pot of all these different cultures and all these different food demands. It takes a lot of coordination, a lot of logistics. New York City is world famous for its diverse and extensive food culture, with 42,000 food businesses across the five boroughs. But between bites of dirty water dogs and foldable pizza, have you ever thought about the journey all that food takes to reach the mouths of every New Yorker and the city's 60 million annual tourists? If you look at a grid and look at New York City, there are five boroughs, the density of population, the, the, the traffic issues, the bridges, the isolation, the water, it's complex. Those things really matter when it comes to distributing food on an everyday basis. Like much of how this remarkable city works, it all boils down to a highly complex system, including these critical 329 acres in the Bronx. Hunts Point Food Distribution Center isn't just big, it's the largest of its kind in the world. 4.5 billion pounds of food pass through here each year, with 50% of it going to New York City. If enough goes wrong, it could spell disaster. And even with the largest food distribution center in the world, this city struggles to feed everyone. Two million New Yorkers suffer from food insecurity. The biggest issue that we have is that there's a big disparity of those who have and those who have not. A lot of it has to do with access. Here's how New York City goes about feeding its 8.8 .8 million residents. If you've ever gone out to eat in the Big Apple, you might have noticed there's plenty to choose from. That's because more than 19 billion pounds of food from around the world flow through the city each year. Waiting at the end of the line are tens of thousands of businesses, from grocery stores to bodegas to restaurants ready to serve hungry and impatient New Yorkers. Half of all food comes in via any of these entry points, four bridges and two tunnels. Almost all of the food, 95%, is carried by refrigerator trucks like these. In fact, on any given day, nearly 30% of trucks that cross the George Washington Bridge are carrying food. The trucks are headed for one of several major food distribution centers across the five boroughs, the largest being these six. But the largest of those by far is Hunts Point. So the Hunts Point distribution center is made up of three distinct markets. The Hunts Point Cooperative Meat Market, the Hunts Point Terminal Produce Market, and then the New Fulton Fish Market. The New York City EDC leases the space on behalf of New York City to these cooperatives, and then they have these subtenants. The market has 155 different vendors, wholesalers, distributors, packagers, and manufacturers, and they employ 8,500 jobs. The site sends out 4.5 billion pounds of food for wholesale each year, with half being shipped out of town and the other dispersed across the boroughs. Considered the New York Stock Exchange of seafood, Fulton Fish Market was one of the city's earliest open-air fish markets, dating back to 1822. New Yorkers, young and old, they all have stories of I used to take a cab with my grandpa down to the fish market to get the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Such passionate stories and age-old traditions. This market has played such a pivotal role in not only shaping New York City, but shaping this country. Once reigned over by the notorious Genovese crime family, and now regulated by the city of New York's Business Integrity Commission, it relocated in 2005 from Fulton Street to Hunts Point. This building alone is 400,000 square feet. That's the Empire State Building on its side. Work begins at a reasonable 1 a.m. and goes five days a week. Workers pack and sell anywhere from three to 15 million pounds of seafood each morning. Once the city that never sleeps lays down for the night, we turn the lights on and we start filling boxes with ice and fish and um, just astronomical amounts of fresh, wild-caught, farmed, frozen, live fish. 
Wholesalers here cater to all areas of the city and far beyond, from top chefs to supermarkets to schools. And many made their start in the market long before it moved to Hunts Point. We're talking sixth, seventh generation family fishmongers, people that have owned fleets of their own fishing boats. I'm the general manager of Joe Manani Fish Company. We're the third oldest uh, fish market in New York City. I'm known as the calamari kid. We have our own line of uh, calamari, Fulton's finest. Well, we've been here for 30 years. We've been in the old market. Uh, like I said, I'm fourth generation, so my grandparents have worked here, my great-grandparents have worked here, cousins and uncles. I have two uncles here now. Joe Manani's uh, grandfather, which is my, my uncle, won the business in a card game in, like, 1903. All this food passes through Hunts Point and the other distribution hubs across the city, then on to the final leg of its journey, the last mile. But through these streets, it's a heck of a mile. Let's start with restaurants and cafes, of which you'll find about 26,000, serving nearly 40% of all the city's grub. If you were to go out to dinner every night, it would take 72 years to try them all. Next in popularity are chain supermarkets like Key Food or Gristini's, making up 23% of the city's food, despite having fewer stores than other point of sale outlets. Meanwhile, right behind at 18% of the city's food are the estimated 13,000 independently owned, locally enjoyed, late night snack stocked bodegas. 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 Local bodegas. Uh, Andrew, the meaning of bodega is means store, right? Yeah, store. Store. Yeah, right. so it's the Spanish translation for store. If you're a New Yorker, you know it when you see it. It's got grocery, deli, coffee shop, all rolled into one tiny package. And no, a bodega cat isn't just for show, they help with rodents. So I'm Manny Mozeb. I own four delis in the neighborhood. Enjoy your coffee, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going. It's really tough running a store. The biggest challenge, I, I say, is to get the trust of the people. I feel like once you build the confidence of the, the people and the trust of the neighborhood, it becomes easier. Freddie, you wanna make a chopped cheese? Chopped cheese is basically, um, it's, it's ground beef. You put in green pepper, onions, and you season it, you chopping it up. So where the chopped cheese comes from, because you put the cheese in, then after that, you chop it up. You go everywhere else, nobody knows what it is, yeah. Bodegas are smaller. They have less availability of fruits and vegetables and healthier foods. They also are higher priced. And so all of these things in consideration make it much more difficult for those that are in vulnerable populations to get healthy food. The reality is that last mile of New York City's food distribution journey can be very different depending on where in the city you live. At least two million New Yorkers suffer from food insecurity with access to affordable, healthy food options varying dramatically between zip codes. Food insecurity is measured by a person or community's ability to find safe, nutritious food, whether as a result of physical, social, or economic circumstances. Bodegas outnumber supermarkets 18 to 1 in low-income communities, doubling what you might see in wealthier neighborhoods. In fact, Brooklyn's Bedford-Stuyvesant has a ratio of 57 bodegas to one supermarket. Meanwhile, the Upper West Side is three to one. Even in Hunts Point, with the distribution center on their doorstep, residents struggle with access to fresh, healthy food and suffer disproportionately from diabetes and obesity. That's why local nonprofits help with food banks and skill training to help prop up the community. My name is Pedro Urbáez. I am the Associate Director of Program Operations, and one of the primary jobs that I have is to make sure that these mobile markets, which you see behind me, which are free bi-monthly distributions of fruits and vegetables and dry goods, are distributed to people all across New York City. We have uh, eight different mobile markets at this time, and we distribute food twice a month. On average, we are serving probably somewhere close to 500 households uh, during any other particular mobile market. Jerry, how's it going? We got, we got through that pallet yet? Oh, no, no, no. 
All right, cool. I think that what would happen if we were not here, the amount of insecurity would probably even rise further, and people would be almost in a desperate situation to have access to food. I mean, at this point, we saw so many people that never even thought of going to a mobile market or a pantry or something like that visiting us and seeing that not only do we provide some great food, but that we've been here the whole time. Even though New York City's food comes from a cluster of different locations, there's no denying that Hunts Point bears a lot of responsibility for the food supply. That's why it's especially important to understand where it's vulnerable. Everyone in the market works together to make sure that our entire city will thrive. The Adams administration is investing $100 million in the Hunts Point Distribution Center and also $40 million in infrastructure. Certainly, it needs to be a cohesive plan. We also need to think about resiliency. New York City is one of the most vulnerable cities to sea level rises from climate change. And if unprepared for disaster, our main supply of food would be on the line. The center narrowly avoided destruction during Hurricane Sandy, but a stroke of luck likely won't be enough for future threats. If there's a disaster that happens in a month or two months or and that we, we haven't planned for, the distribution center could be shut down. And that is frightening considering the amount of food that goes through there every single day. Millions of meals, from homes to restaurants to Manny's chopped cheese made fresh behind the bodega counter, have passed through distribution centers like Hunts Point before making their last mile journey. It's an exciting time to be part of the meat business. We raise the bar pretty high. For the most part, you know, it's provided a good living for my brother and I. It's very important to the city. When you listen to the stories of three and four generations, you see the similarities. We may be coming from different communities, different cultures, different backgrounds, but you know what? We're all New Yorkers. We're all New Yorkers. New York City is best enjoyed when eaten. Its countless culinary classics are a symbol of the city's vibrant diversity. And with a growing population leading to growing demand, distribution centers like Hunts Point face many more challenges ahead. Feeding the largest urban population in the country every single day requires a scale of operation only achievable through this extensively woven web of distribution. Even when the storms come or the sea rises, food won't ever be far away.